Coming up, police surround a home as the search for a mass shooting suspect continues. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A multi-state search continues tonight for a U.S. Army reservist who police say fatally shot 18 people at a bowling alley and a bar in Maine. State officials have ordered residents in southern Maine to shelter in place. CBS's Mike Sullivan is in Lewiston with the latest on the manhunt. Armed agents surrounded a home belonging to 40-year-old Robert Card, the prime suspect in Wednesday night's shooting at a bowling alley and a restaurant in Lewiston, Maine. Over a bullhorn, they shouted, we know you're inside, come out with your hands up. But Maine Department of Public Safety says that's a standard search warrant announcement. He should be considered armed and dangerous. Police say Card walked into the bowling alley with an AR-style weapon and opened fire, killing seven. We have an active shooter. We have multiple injuries. He then traveled to a nearby restaurant and killed another eight. Three victims later died at the hospital. What makes this crime so heinous is in a typical year, Maine might have 22 murders and last night, we almost approached the number for the entire year. As of today, there are at least eight people still recovering here at Central Maine Medical Center in Lewiston. Three are listed in critical condition. Card is an Army reservist who was hospitalized this summer for mental issues, including hearing voices. Card's cousin, Michael Mercier. He's got a lot of problems up in his head right now. One of them's uh, uh, schizophrenic. Investigators recovered this car registered to Card, abandoned near a boat launch in a nearby town. Police say he owns several weapons and is an expert marksman and avid outdoorsman. Mike Sullivan, CBS News, Lewiston, Maine. Law enforcement intelligence officials say Card's girlfriend recently dumped him. They're calling it a significantly destabilizing event, but say the exact motive for Wednesday's shooting is unclear. Following that mass shooting, many states are bringing up the topic of red flag laws. 21 states have adopted that type of law. Kentucky is not one of them, but it's become a talking point in the governor's race. Both candidates have different views. Julia Sandor spoke to one advocacy group about their push for more laws after the latest mass shooting. What happened in Maine can easily happen in Kentucky. Across the Commonwealth, there have been many conversations on extreme risk laws. Over the past two years, gun violence prevention advocacy groups have pushed this type of legislation, specifically through the CAR Act. It is similar to Maine's yellow flag law. It directly addresses mental health and it protects against impulsive acts. It's an extreme risk protection order. It allows loved ones to go to law enforcement to intervene in mental health crisis, to temporarily remove with due process firearms or keep the person in crisis from purchasing firearms. When it comes to the governor race, both candidates have different views on the topic. Governor Andy Bashir and AG Daniel Cameron both weighed in on red flag laws at the WLKY debate last week. The second thing we ought to do is something that red states like Florida and blue states have all done, and that's pass a red flag law. Again, we don't need red flag laws here in Kentucky. We need to make sure that we look out and support the Second Amendment, and I will certainly ensure that. For Kathy Crow with Moms Demand Action, she's felt the impact of gun violence firsthand and says with preventative laws, things could have ended differently. They were lost to suicide, and they had been in and out of treatment for depression. But she says she'll continue advocating and hopes for more progress with the CAR Act next session. In Lexington, Julia Sandor, WKYT. Crow with Moms Demand Action says people can get involved themselves by talking to your local legislator and advocating for laws. And she says next session, a Republican legislator will be filing the CAR Act. Now to a developing story overseas. The U.S. military launched airstrikes on two locations in eastern Syria linked to Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. 
The strikes come in retaliation for a slew of drone and missile attacks against U.S. bases and personnel in the region that began early last week. The U.S. is hoping to stop future aggression, possibly fueled by Israel's war against Hamas. A threat was reported today at a Southern Kentucky high school. The London Police Department says the threat came in this morning against South Laurel High School. Crews evacuated the school as a precaution. KSP brought in bomb detection canines to search both the middle and high schools. London police say a juvenile suspect is in custody and charges are pending. Students were able to return to the classroom. We are tracking some more dry weather across the mountains as we close out your Thursday. Let's take a live look at satellite and radar at this hour. You can see we are dry under a partly to mainly cloudy sky in some areas, and that will continue to be the case as we go into tonight. Those temperatures also not as cool tonight, all thanks to those clouds. Right now we're in the upper 50s to upper 60s in some areas, up to 68 for Jackson, 67 for Pikeville, and 56 over in Manchester at this hour. As we go into tonight, more dry Dry weather is on the way. We stay calm. Those lows back in the upper 50s and lower 60s. And once again, we stay partly to mainly cloudy as you wake up on Friday. So if you have any plans to wake up and head out for a jog, the forecast looking pretty good. We stay dry once again on your morning commute, but we are watching out for maybe a few spotty rain chances on Friday, but higher rain chances are looming by Monday. Also some very chilly weather by Halloween of next week. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. Two new higher ground communities will be built in Floyd and Letcher counties. Today, Governor Andy Bashir announced more than 100 homes will be built in these areas for flood survivors. The Grandview neighborhood will be in Jenkins off US 23 and will have around 115 homes. Jenkins Mayor Todd Dupree says this is one flood recovery project of many they've made progress on. You know, this is just one big project of many that's going on in Jenkins and Letcher County. Uh, the, the, the flood was awful, it was a disaster, uh, but it has opened doors that we didn't have before, and we're taking full advantage of that to try to, uh, you know, work on tourism, economic development, housing, and, and all the pieces involved. So uh, it's an exciting day to be able to get started on this and, and it be a part of the, the bigger plan. The governor also presented $9 million for seven nonprofit housing agencies. The other high ground community announced today is in Wayland, and that one will add 12 homes. We have more about the projects on WYMT.com. A flood control study is included in the Energy and Water Federal Funding Bill that passed the U.S. House today. Congressman Hal Rogers says the bill includes half a million dollars for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to study flood control options along the Kentucky River following historic back-to-back -back flooding in 2021 and 2022. It now goes to the Senate. For more on what's in the bill for Eastern Kentucky, you can find this story on WYMT.com. Some Perry County students affected by the flood got a special surprise today. Actress Jennifer Garner visited with Buckhorn and Robinson Elementary students who have been attending school together at A.B. Combs since the flood. Alongside Garner was staff from Save the Children and a crew from the NBC Today show. Garner came with books for the kids to take home and the school to keep. 5,000 books will also be donated to both Robinson and Buckhorn to help supply their new libraries when they are ready. Operation Unite staff want to equip the younger generation with drug prevention skills. The nonprofit has been battling substance abuse for 20 years, and now administrators say their focus is turning to prevention. New President Tom Vicini says it's a group effort to defeat drug abuse. We go and create partnerships with medical facilities, with law enforcement, with elected officials, with school systems, um, every community organization that we can find, they offer resources that we don't have, and we offer resources that they don't have. Vicini says they have different programs at schools to educate students about the dangers of drugs. An off-duty Alaska Airlines pilot accused of trying to cut off a plane's engines mid-flight took told police he took magic mushrooms 48 hours before the incident. 
According to court records, Joseph Emerson told investigators he believed he was dreaming and thought pulling the handles of a fire extinguishing system would cause him to wake up. The scary in-air situation is putting a new focus on mental health in a high-stress job. If you've been dealing with depression, your world has narrowed. You had consider very few options anymore about how to get out of this. You feel like you're the lowest of the low. You just want the pain to stop. Your thought isn't about what about the passengers. Your thought is, I want to end the pain that I'm in. The doctor says anytime people start to feel cornered, they rule out a lot of options. He reminds people there are options out there. And you can always call 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, for help. Callers can stay anonymous. Floyd County's animal advocates are celebrating something they consider a win for area animals. A new animal control ordinance was passed in the county last week, providing guidance for animal owners and law enforcement to keep animals safe from neglect and abuse. The ordinance was a project from the Animal Commission, which began years ago and is now seeing what organizers consider a lot of success in its efforts to protect animals. Then we came through COVID, we surpassed that. Then came the tragedy of the police shooting. That put a damper on it. Then came the flood. And so we really just kicked our heels down the last couple of months and was just like, we need this. There's too much suffering. This has got to end. The ordinance was championed by the Floyd County Fiscal Court and animal advocates like Sheena Maynard. You can find the full text on our website. A traffic alert for some early morning drivers. Long delays are possible along Highway 15 in Knott County where bridge repairs are underway over Car Creek Lake. Crews will be pouring concrete between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. tomorrow and again on Tuesday, weather permitting. Flaggers will be directing traffic. They hope to be finished each morning before school traffic. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, members of Kentucky's National Guard were honored today in Frankfurt how they've been supporting law enforcement at the southern border. Plus, we are tracking some cold weather by next week. Those details on the way after this break.